one of the biggest fears that many British people face is forgetting to say sorry. Imagine a scenario where you bump into someone, the first thing that a British person will say is sorry. But there are times where we forget to say this, either because we're in a rush or simply that we were not thinking. This scenario is one that happens to all of us and when it does, it leaves us feeling ashamed and embarrassed. Just like the IoT teapot, I personally do not want to be the victim of this and so in this project we will build the auto apologizer. For this project you will need the ISD1820 voice recording module or its equivalent, the i16-COB20, a MicroPython Pi board with the onboard accelerometer, a 9 volt battery, a small speaker, materials for an enclosure, you could use cardboard, wood or a 3D printer, solid core wires and a 10 microfarad capacitor. All the parts in this project are available from DigiKey and a link for the bill of materials can be found in the description below. The idea behind this project is very trivial. The Pi board has an inbuilt accelerometer which allows us to detect sudden changes in velocity. If our Python code detects a rather substantial acceleration, for example bumped into someone, then it will trigger the ISD1820 to play a pre-recorded message saying, oh I'm sorry. Luckily for us, the ISD1820 board has all the circuitry needed to drive an 8 ohm speaker connected to it, so we don't need to create a speaker driver, and the Pi board contains the accelerometer with easy to use libraries, so we don't have to mess around with complex registers over I2C. So let's build the auto apologizer. So here is the schemic schematic for the auto apologizer. We have a capacitor here to make sure that the voltage coming from the battery, or at least its power source, is smoothed out, because even though batteries are already smooth, we could actually connect this thing to something like uh, a wall wart, for example. And so that capacitor could be quite useful. The Pi board is directly connected to the 9 volt battery because it has an internal regulator. And this input voltage gets regulated to 3.3 volts, which is also available on several pins. And we use those pins to power the ISD1820. So when a vibration is detected, it outputs a signal on X1. This causes the ISD1820 to play the apology and we hear it on the speaker. When I ordered my Pi board, I made sure to get one with headers so I can easily prototype projects without making them permanent. The first step is to get power to the Pi board and this is incredibly easy to do thanks to the positive V input. This input is fed into a regulator which removes the need for any external regulation circuitry. Having said that, a small 10 microfarad capacitor across the battery inputs is not a bad idea. A switch could be added in series with the battery, but instead I decided not to do this because as a British person, I cannot risk having this device being switched off. The next task involves connecting the ISD1820 module to the Pi board, which only requires three wires, one for providing power, one for providing ground, and one wire for sending the pulse that will trigger the ISD1820 board that will make our apology. The pin that I have used is X1, and that can be found on this pad. Now that we have the two boards connected together, we need to connect a speaker to the ISD1820. The ISD1820 board uses a Molex connector for the speaker, but none of my speakers have those connections, so I soldered the speaker to the pads on the bottom of MicroPython based microcontrollers can be connected to a USB port and Python commands can be sent and executed using a serial terminal program such as PuTTY or RealTerm. However, this only allows for single commands, which is not helpful when we want the system to run some predefined code. Instead, we will take advantage of special files that can be saved onto a Pi board. These are boot.py and main.py. When MicroPython starts, it first looks for a file called boot.py and will execute any Python code inside that file. When this has been done, the Pi board will then look for main.py, which also holds Python code. In this situation, we will store our code in main.py since boot.py should be reserved for configuration settings and various other boot related options. Unlike the ESP8266 board, we can directly connect the Pi board to a USB slot and it should be recognized as a removable disk like a USB flash drive. This means that we can directly edit, change and save files without the need for a complex command line like we did with the ESP8266. With the flash drive open, we will now need to drag our script file over and ensure that it's called main.py. But how does this code work? The auto apologizer code is quite simple, with the main bulk of the code being defined inside a function, import PYB which is a machine specific library, and then the calling of the main function itself. The first task that our function performs is defining some constants and setting the pins. So the first thing we do is we define the constant acceleration trig which is our trigger level for setting the apology. 
The second line is creating an acceleration object, which is used to actually take the acceleration readings. The next line sets apologize to false. The next three lines initialize our absolute values of acceleration because acceleration can be negative because it can be going in the opposite direction. So we want to make sure we only get positive values only. And then the last two lines configure the pin. This one creates a pin object and this one sets it to be an output with push and pull. The main bulk of the code sits in a while one loop and this runs indefinitely. The first task that we do is we set apologize to false. And then the next task is to get the absolute values of the acceleration. Now the comment says about finding the difference, but this, was a, this is actually an old comment and it should be removed. The comment should actually say, find the absolute value. The next step compares each individual access to the acceleration trigger value. And if any one of those absolute values is greater than what the uh, trigger value is set to, then we set apologize to true. And then the last step is to detect if apologize is true. And if it is, we make a pulse on pin one or X one and that turns on the ISD1820. All of this code here is defined inside the function run. So when the Pi board runs, it gets to here, sees the run function, and then executes the auto apologizer code. Recording our apology is very easy to do with the ISD1820. All we have to do is hold down the record button, apologize, and then release the record button. Then whenever our Pi board outputs a trigger signal to the play E pin, the board will apologize for us. I am very sorry. This project is meant to be a wearable and getting it to fit in a small space provides some challenges. An enclosure needs to be used that can house all the parts and this could be made from wood, cardboard or a custom 3D printed model. While cardboard and wood serve as good prototyping methods, I opted for a 3D printer model using the XYZ DaVinci Junior. This 3D printer is great for small models, but be warned, the printer only accepts chipped filament, which can be rather pricey. Despite that, the official filaments seem to produce consistent results, which is more than what I could ask for. With the model printed, it's time to place all the different parts into the enclosure, connect up the battery and test the system out. So we've now got the project into the box. We've wired up the speaker. We've got our PP3 connector on the end and all we have to do now is connect the two together and our system should now be working. So let's go and test it. Sorry. Since the module cannot apologize for me normally, I will now have to say sorry since that's all the time we have left in this episode. So thank you for watching and see you next time.